right, guys, welcome back to Downtown Rams. As always, I'm your host, Alexis Kraft. Join here with my co-host, Jake Ellenbogen. And guys, we are coming to you after a Rams loss uh, to the New Orleans Saints. And honestly, guys, we're going to talk about that game a little bit today, but there's a few things that Jake and I are going to talk about in this episode. Um, This is going to be a, a very brief recap of the Saints game at some point. Um, We are going to preview also the Chiefs game because we know that it's Thanksgiving week. Everybody's traveling, including myself. So I go out of town tomorrow, so I'm not going to be able to record on a Friday night like I normally am. So we're going to briefly recap the Chiefs game. But there's also a lot of Rams-related news that Jake and I want to start this off with. Um, And we kind of want to give our thoughts on that because we know that you guys are commenting on that a lot and you guys want to hear our thoughts on that so we're just going to talk about that first because honestly the Saints game we don't want to relive it we know that you guys don't either um so Jake let's get into this um as I sit here I'm wrapped in a Rams blanket if you guys are watching on YouTube because remember what I said I am always freezing especially today I don't my house can't get warm it's probably a problem that I need to look into but We just learned, Jake, about uh, four hours ago now, five hours ago, that the Rams have released running back Daryl Henderson and linebacker Justin Hollins and tight end Kendall Blaine. But the big news here, Jake, is the Rams have released Daryl Henderson. This is not something that anybody saw coming. I Listen, if this had been Cam Akers, I would have not been shocked at all. I would not have been blindsided. I would have been like the drama that ha- that Cam has put everybody through this season. He still didn't perform after that. He did look a little better against the Saints. I will say that. And, and you, we'll talk about that later on. Um, it was the Saints, though. Uh, we did lose, but it doesn't make the Saints a good team <laughs> because we lost. Uh, it just makes our loss worse. Uh, but Jake, I mean... <sighs> I, I'm going to let you give your thoughts on this, but, um, you know, as far as how I'm feeling right now, I just feel like it sends a really bad message to release Daryl Henderson. I understand that they, they might not have brought him back, right? He's in the last year of his contract. So everyone's like, oh, well, they're, they're releasing him because we're not going to bring him back. Okay. I get that. But to release him mid season, um, I feel like sends a message that you're pretty much throwing in the towel. For the season, I mean, you also let go of of Justin Hollins, who's started as well for the Rams. Uh, this just felt kind of like the Rams are signaling to everybody where they're at right now and their mindset. And I feel like it's a bad look. And I also feel like they let the better running back go between him and Acres. Uh, you know, obviously the three running backs were Henderson, Acres, and Williams. Williams is a rookie. Um, so, you know, if they're going to cut anybody, it's going to be Akers or Henderson. And I feel like they made the wrong choice. Jake, what are your thoughts on the Rams cuts today? Absolutely disgusted, uh, with the state of this team right now. Um, I think that they are speeding up a potential implosion. I see a lot of similarities between the, uh, end of the greatest show on turf and this team right now. Um, doesn't mean they can't bounce back. Doesn't mean that they don't have a plan, but I don't like their plan right now. Um, I, you know, it's people will say what they will about, you know, well, Jake Henderson wanted out. Of course he wanted out. I mean, if you have that talent, you're constantly showing up, you're doing the hard work, you're never complaining and you're not being utilized. Yeah. You want out. I mean, it's like being in, at a job and, and never getting that promotion when you're actually playing better or you, you're performing better than the other person who came and they came a year after you. Um, you know, and you find out they're, they're getting paid more than you. And, you know, it's this whole thing. It's just, it, it really bothers me. Um, you know, people are like, it's not that big of a deal, Jake. You shouldn't make that big of a deal. No, it's a big deal. I, I it, it's not just about Henderson. Uh, Justin Hollins is a starting caliber outside linebacker. Is he the best pass rusher in the league? No. Is he very good against the run? Yes. Uh, Terrell Lewis, He just goes on disappearing acts. I mean, we see him. He has the best pass rush rep ever. And then the next rep, you might not notice him. Um, Alexis, I I push back on the idea this happened because of the contract year. Because if that's the case, then how in God's green earth, how in God's name and how in holy hell is Taylor Rapp and Bobby Evans still on this roster? I mean, uh, Bobby Evans, and these are the facts, Daryl Henderson scored multiple touchdowns for this team. 
Uh, they don't win the Super Bowl without him. Um, he was fantastic in pass pro and just was never used. And Bobby Evans has never really played a great game. His one shining moment was that primetime game against Chicago in which we kind of say he held his own against uh, Khalil Mack, but we know that Sean McVay used Tyler Higby to chip Khalil Mack made it easier on him. That's his one shining moment, Alexis, and he's going to play. Th- these are the facts. He's going to play through his entire rookie deal, and Daryl Henderson's not. And uh, it goes back to what you said. It sends a bad message to the team. It sends a bad message to uh, you know the players, um, the locker room, the fan base. And oh, in addition to that, sends a bad message to any running back that would ever consider coming here. If I'm Tony Pollard, no, I'm not signing with you in the off season. If I'm B John Robinson, if the Rams somehow figured out a way to get a first round pick LOL and drafted B John Robinson, B John Robinson would be out the door. He'd be like, I don't want to be another Todd Gurley. I mean, the way they treated Gurley, the how the way they treated Dickerson back in the day, um, you know, they wouldn't pay him in a world where there was no salary cap. So they wouldn't pay Dickerson, you know, Marshall Falk, that's different. You know, he was there. That was the, the good period, the greatest show on turf period. He was the straw that stirred the drink there and they needed him. But after him, Steven Jackson, he was rewarded as great as he was never got an offensive line to help him out. Never was able to really play in meaningful playoff games. And, Uh, Oh, by the way, now you have Todd Gurley. Todd Gurley's amazing. Best player in the league, arguably, at least on the offensive side of the ball. Gets dinged up on his knee. Still runs 3.8 yards per carry average in 2019. They caught him. Uh, If you're not doing the homework, uh, that's actually a .5 yard per carry average higher than Cam Akers is right now, who they're bending over backwards for. No, it it sends an awful message um, all across the board. If I'm a running back, I don't want to play here, period. And I agree, you know, something that this organization does not have a a good history of is treating their running backs and and cultivating good careers for their running backs. I mean, obviously, you know, you've got a few exceptions in there. I mean, Steven Jackson, right? Uh, Todd Gurley until it's it's a very complicated, I guess, thing with Todd Gurley. But, you know, Jake, I'm concerned because, listen, when I watched the game against the Saints, I remember thinking I was like, well, Kyron Williams, okay, looked great, okay, played a lot, right, during the Saints, uh, looked really good. You and I were not surprised at all because, you know, we've seen the tape on him. It's we the know the only how he optimistic play. factor we- about what's happening <laughs> right now. <laughs> yeah, and he looked really good, right? And we're going to talk about that a little later. I mean, you guys know me and Kyron Williams. I absolutely love him. And I remember thinking, I was like, you know what? You got him, you've got Daryl Henderson. I don't really like Akers, but we can make it work. Or maybe we'll like get rid of Akers and we'll bring in somebody else in the draft next year, right? Uh, now that's not the case. Um, now you don't have Daryl Henderson. Um, Akers and Williams are the only two running backs on the 53-man roster. That's it, guys. Um, now they might bring up somebody from the practice squad, you know, Ronnie rivers, I'm sure will get activated or something like that, but they are missing a, I feel like a vital piece now of that run game. And again, my assumption is that Sean McVay doesn't care because he's shown he doesn't care about the run game. So I'm sure right now he's like, Oh, well, this is not a huge deal, you know? Right. Like, yeah, what I what I'm confused about, Jake, is like anybody with eyes watching the Rams running backs. Like, how can you think that Cam Akers is better than Daryl Henderson? I don't nobody, know. nobody. The only people here's what I keep hearing. I keep hearing, well, Cam is a higher upside. I'm like, does he? You guys are acting like this is his first year. This is not his first exactly. year. Um, You know, if you go back and look at the tape, like he, he has not had any improvement finding a lane i mean it's happened um i think there was a run jake that i texted you during the saints game i was like cam found a lane like oh my god like progress but like you know he has these struggles and not only does he have these struggles jake he got really upset and missed several weeks as a healthy scratch um daryl henderson we know you know you and i that he was not happy um he has also now revealed that on twitter uh, and Facebook today, if you guys, you know, Twitter search it or go look, Daryl Henderson <clears throat> has made comments and is liking tweets about how he hasn't been happy at all this year about his usage, but he still played. Uh, so, you know, but, but there obviously has been tension because like you and I said, you know, on Sunday, 
it was like the second half. He didn't play at all. I mean, it was just. He didn't play after the Kyrie first two game. carries of the game. He had yeah, four snaps. I'm like, I tweeted it out. I'm like, notice Henderson runs well and they ignore him. Any semblance of a good run by Akers and they have, they have the hot hand in. It's like, why is it the hot hand when Akers finally runs well, but it's not the hot hand when Daryl Henderson runs well. I got news for you. Daryl Henderson as a whole for his career and 2019 was kind of a mixed bag because he wasn't really featured and, you know, had a hard time, you know, he averages 4.4 yards per carry. Okay. Um, what do you want from a guy that you draft in the third round? I, I mean, he is exactly what they, they got. I mean, they, they got a guy in the third round. He's exactly what you would have wanted, did everything well. It just, Alexis, it bothers the hell out of me because, you know, like it just basically kind of spits in the face of the we, not me culture. Um, you know, a guy that can just sit well, out and then you bend over backwards for him. I mean, let's be honest. Today, the Rams admitted, actually on Sunday, the Rams admitted Cam Akers won the war. He won the tug of war with the Rams. He won the tug of war with Sean McVay. And now he's the lead back getting 14 carries. I hope he enjoys it because I I don't know who would want to be in this backfield. I really feel for Kyron because right now, I mean, it it just, it's scary long-term. It's like this guy, is he going to be used the same way Henderson was? He has all the same capabilities Henderson had, you know, he's great in pass pro. He's great in the receiving game. He can run in between the tackles, can make guys miss and look at the way they treat Henderson. What's to say that we're sitting here talking up Kyron Williams, that they're not going to just draft Zach Charbonnet or whoever in the second or third round and do the same thing because what, what, you know, remember when Cooper Cubs, like the definition of insanity, who's to say the Rams aren't going to literally do the same thing with Henderson as Kyron Williams and just bring in another guy like acres in the second round. This is what I'm talking about. Eventually there, there's well, a philosophical issue going on with the running backs in LA. And I agree. And guys, like I mentioned, this, ha- this episode has no format because there's just no, none. <laughs> a dumpster fire going on. So we're just having a conversation. So while we're talking about it, let's talk about Kyron Williams. Okay. Let's balance out the uh, highs and the lows. <laughs> um, so let's talk about a little bit of a high um, Kyron Williams. Okay. So here's, and, he, and this is, it's good and bad. So here's, here's the good thing about Kyron Williams. Okay. Is who he is as a player Many of you saw him for the first time really in action on Sunday. He looked great against the Saints. He had all gains. He had really good rushes. You saw that wiggle. You saw him break tackles, you know, in the receiving game, making a a, a catch and getting yards after carry. Could not have asked, you know, every time that they called on, on Kyron, he was, he killed it. Uh, he killed it in pass pro. Uh, I literally wanted to cry. I saw his first like block. I forget against who it was, but he went in there and he blocked, you know, some defensive end linebacker. Five and I was like, there too. you go. Yeah. I mean, he, he, he killed it. Right. Yeah. That is a positive. The positive is that Kyron Williams, when he is healthy is, is everything that we want him to be. Now the negative goes into exactly what Jake was saying. I am worried about what, they're going to do with Kyron Williams career like legitimately and everyone's going to say it's way too early it is way too early to say that of course it is but what we're talking about right now is we're talking about the philosophical issue of Rams and running and running backs they never allow any running back that I can think of in recent memory to get into any type of consistent pattern any type of consistent usage like here's the thing I'm all for using a running back by committee I'm all for it. Um, Sean McVay will never do any type of run scheme because he clearly hate, hates the run, as we've seen since he's been head coach. But listen, if you if you want to theoretically, right, if you're the Rams and you want to do running back by committee and you want to use Acres, fine, use Acres. Have Kyron Williams, have Acres. But now you've let go of Henderson. I think that they're going to do what you are afraid they're going to do, Jake. I think they're going to, in their minds, they're going to try to go get another running back next year and if they do that they better get somebody who is the exact opposite of acres and williams and really go for it because you know i'm i'm very concerned about the rams run game again i would have loved to see a duo of henderson and williams um i think that would have been perfect because they're the only two running backs that actually produce i people want to keep defending cam acres and listen i'm not trying to be a cam acres hater i don't hate cam acres but if you look at the numbers and Jake and I have talked about it 
several episodes this season, if you look at the numbers, like Henderson was outproducing Acres by a lot. Um, it wasn't even a debate. I've gone on other shows and they brought that up to me statistically, like it wasn't even close. So I have to assume the only reason, Jake, that they let Henderson go is because they knew he wasn't coming back next year. But even if that's the case, I don't agree with letting him go midseason. I mean, to me, that seems like you're throwing in the towel. I agree. Um, you know, in, in 22 games with Cam Akers, the Rams are 11 and 11. Um, he averages 3.8 yards per carry for his career. I mean, at some point, we can't just go by what he did in 2021, the 2020 to 2021 season. Um, I, I think people use that run that, that, that game against new England on Thursday night football, like solidified his spot as a guy that'll constantly be talked about is, well, you know, he's got this potential because he had 171 yards on 29 carries against Bill Belichick and people never will let that go. And I'm not saying he wasn't looking like he was going to be a star, um, but you know who else was looking like he was going to be a star? Jared Goff. Jared Goff was looking like he was going to be a star. Like at one point we were like, you know, this Jared Goff guy might actually be better than Wentz and might actually be a star. I mean, 2017 looked good. 2018 early in the year looked really good. The Chiefs game. And then he kind of fell off. Um, look, I'm at the point here where there are a lot of injuries and there's going to be fingers being pointed. There always is when someone's constantly taking the blame is constantly going up there at the podium and saying it's on me. There's always stuff behind the scenes. Okay. It doesn't matter who it is. Um, no one's perfect. So there's going to be blame, but I guess today felt very reactionary. The finger pointing. I did not like, uh, just being like, Oh, you know what? We're going to make changes. We're going to cut Henderson who likely probably wanted to get cut because he wasn't being utilized correctly. But even still, uh, Justin Hollins who's starting, I know he's a free agent after the season, but he's not bad and he's not the issue. And I, I just have issues with the guys they cut weren't the issues. You know what I mean? Like if you wanted to, you know, uh, appease the audience, appease the fan base, you would have cut Taylor Rapp, okay? That's what you would have done because you already cut a third rounder who you had control of, you know, for two years with Terrell Burgess. Taylor Rapp is in a contract year and he's considerably getting worse. Like somehow he has regressed to the point where Alexis, I think he's worse than Craig Dahl. I, I'm, I'm willing to say he's worse than Craig Dahl right now. Deep down the field, Jalen Ramsey gets burned and I get that he got burned. I think it's just Chris Olave is faster than everyone else. And no one else really realized how fast he was, but Jalen got burned and like there, you knew it was over when Jalen Ramsey got burned, even though there's a body up at the top, Taylor Rapp was late. How was he late? I don't know. He's playing deep safety. He's the last line of defense. Why is he not like that should have been picked should have at least been broken up, but Instead, he gets burned. I mean, you have to understand, Olave ran like 40 yards and ran past Taylor Rapp, who is like positioned way back. It's just, I don't know. I, I didn't like the guys they cut. Uh, and you know, I've had an issue. I, I just think they're, you know, the fan base is very split on decisions that McVeigh and Steed make. I think some people are too reactionary and they say fire McVeigh and Sneed. And then some people just will defend them no matter what. I got to tell you, I think this is where the fan base has to put their foot down and be like, this is not okay. It's not that it's unacceptable to cut Daryl Henderson and Justin Hollins. It's not like they're, you know, now they're not going to you know make the playoffs. They probably weren't anyway, but it's just the fact that well, like the vibes right now in LA don't feel good, you know? And it's like, you're not getting OBJ. And honestly, I'm starting to wonder if Von Miller saw something beforehand. If he saw the makeup of this roster and he knew ahead of time, like, Hey, I'm not winning a super bowl here this was a one-time thing. They get, they got to work their issues out. I mean, I just, I've had the realization this year, the glass is shattered. And I think really it started Alexis. We talked about it when Terrell Burgess 
uh, got cut. When when they cut Burgess, I was like, they just cut a third rounder. When they're the F them picks team, you need all the help you can get. And you're cutting a guy who's there under contract for two years. No, I, I just, I don't like the direction this team's going in right now. I just don't. Well, need I remind everybody that I felt this way after week four and everyone said I was overreacting. So if you said that to me online, I'm not overreacting now. Um, I just feel like the vibe this season, and, and really after the Bills lost, but I don't want to say that because that was yeah. the Bills. Um, but you could just, you. there's been this vibe in the air with the Rams this season where it was like they won the Super Bowl. A lot of people thought that like people were going to retire. Several you know players, but they, they didn't. They came back, and dare I say, it feels like since week one, their head hasn't really been in the game. Is that me being dramatic? Because I felt have felt this entire Rams season that everybody seemed really checked out. Everybody seemed really confused. Um, you know, I remember week week one through four, you and I were sitting here like, why does it look like nobody has any idea what's going on? Like, why does it look like Stafford doesn't understand? And now, listen, I understand the offensive line thing, guys, but we can only use that as an excuse for so long because, sadly, it is not <laughs> the Rams' only problem. Um, I wish it were, but it's not. And I just feel like this entire season has been just kind of like uh, maybe a lack of preparedness, maybe kind of a delusion, maybe kind of like, oh, well, we just won the Super Bowl. We're going to be fine. And it has not been fine. A lot of it's been out of our control. A lot of it hasn't. Um, you know, I think Cooper Cup was really the only player that seems like they came to play. Um, it just felt very weird. And Sean McVay specifically needs to take a lot of heat, not only with the play calling. Um, I feel like a lot of the, the decisions, front office decisions, I really think it comes from McVay. Um, I know everybody wants to say Sneed and company, but I think McVay, you, you're delusional if you think that McVay is, does not have a heavy hand oh, and a very, course. very heavy say. So, you know, everybody's like, oh, we need to trust and Snead. I'm like, you need to be saying McVay because trust me, these decisions aren't happening without McVay's approval. Uh, so it just feels very weird and like we don't know what's going on. And it would be different if these things were happening and we had a shot to make the playoffs and we were playing winning football. Then it would be like, you know what? This does feel weird and it sucks, but we're just going to keep rolling with it. Trust the process. Uh, that's not the case. Uh, we are effectively removed from a, a playoff chance at the moment. Um, Jake, this would probably be a time to bring up the Saints game that we lost. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, nervous laughter. Um, it, very bad. And, and you know what, Jake? You know what's annoying about the Saints game? I want you to give your thoughts on this. That was a game that we could have won. And for the first half, it looked like we should have won that game. Um, we actually did not look that bad the first quarter and the first half of the second quarter. Um, so what what were your thoughts on that? Because I know, you know, this isn't a traditional recap episode, but we should still talk about the game. Yeah, I mean, I think they win the game if Stafford doesn't get hurt and if Inseki doesn't get hurt. But, you know, the fact of the matter is they did. And, you know... I mean, I'm not going to blame the Rams for trotting out Bobby Evans when they literally don't have anything else. But I mean, can we stop now? Like the people that were still defending him, like he's playing out of position. He's a tackle. He's not a guard. Can we finally admit that he's just not in anything? Like, I mean, he could be in the league. He can be a backup, but like he's not a starting caliber I mean, he was a bust pick. Like he's going to make it through his rookie deal, but he was a bust pick. Um, I think Stafford that the thing that was really upsetting Alexis is that I think Stafford showed you if he doesn't get the concussion, they probably beat Arizona. They probably beat the saints. He looks like 2021 Stafford. And I don't think he's played that bad this year. I think he's actually played well considering everything going on. Um, but just, he looks, he had a command, you know, you saw it, the, the throw to two, two at well, I just felt like, you know, there were some drops that wasn't really on him. I just felt like he was in the zone and it just, it sucked because, um, you know, I, I just, one, I'll say this. I think the refs do an absolute terrible job of protecting him because I think the dude gets hit more than anybody after the whistle and I watch all over the league and he never gets those calls. Um, I've watched Justin Fields get a call. I've watched Mac Jones get a call. I've watched Trevor Lawrence get multiple calls. 
I, I don't know what stat I've watched Tom Brady get a call on a sack that basically won them the game. To, uh, like when is Stafford going to get a pass interference call? Or, uh, uh, sorry, roughing the passer call. I don't know. Um, but you know, it was like, they started off the game. I like their game script. Once again, I feel like we're talking about Arizona. Um, I like their game script. They started off well, and then they just kind of veered away from what they were doing. Right. And I, it, I was just saying this on, um, the other podcast I do with, with Cam Lynch. And, um, I will say that Sean McVay is the guy you could run the single back. So let's just turn this into a Madden thing for a second. You run a single back formation. You press half back dive every single time and you're getting eight to 10 yards. McVay wouldn't be okay with winning that way. Even though it's working, he would have to try and reinvent the wheel. He would then all of a sudden, even though they can't stop you, no matter what, you're running up the gut with either Henderson, Kyra, and Cam, and they're just getting a first down every single carry. When push came to shove, Sean McVay would be like, hmm, let's run an end around with Brandon Powell. And then he get stopped for a loss of two. And then all of a sudden it's second and 12 after you just ran down their throats, second and 12. And now you're throwing the rest of the game. And, and then, you know, he comes out and a few weeks ago, he said he feels like he's wasting plays running on first down. Well, yeah, because you're running with cam Akers on first down. There you go. Um, I just like, it's so frustrating and we really haven't, we didn't talk a ton about the defense. Cause I think the offense is just, really gotten to the point where it's starting to grind our gears. I mean, it's, it's really brutal. So it's beyond that beyond. Yeah. I mean, beyond, beyond. we're keeping it PG essentially, but yeah, I mean, there, you could, you could say a lot of different curse words to describe the Rams offense. It, it I find myself yeah. more angry about football than I've been in a lot of years. I mean, since I started covering them back in 2016, I feel like the 2016 season it was like false hope, but we were just upset because Jared Goff like wouldn't start. Like they kept starting case Keenum, and you're sitting there like, man, this team went, went three and one. We get it. I know Keenum, you know, was like, I remember when he was with Ryan Seacrest on some show eating victory waffles the next day, like they were three and one and they did not win like another game except for one the rest of the year. And I feel like the fan base watched that trade go through this team was ready to compete. I'm not saying Jeff Fisher would have won a super bowl, but the team was ready to compete. They traded all those picks for golf and then they wouldn't start him. We've come to find out he's way more raw than we expected. He wasn't ready. He comes in and gets pulverized because the offensive line's terrible. And Greg Gaines, uh, not Greg Gaines, Greg Robinson is his left tackle. Um, but that year was not like the talent they have now. And I've said it before and I'll say it again. Last year's yeah. team was not more talented than the 2018 Super Bowl team that lost. Last year's team just had Matthew Stafford and the other one had Goff. That was the difference. But, you know, I definitely think the 2018 team was more talented. However, this year, I thought this year they could be more talented than last year because they were healthy again. Okay, answer. Mm -hmm. Okay, answer this. Um, do you think the the problem right now, what do you think is the bigger problem? Do you think the problem is, and they kind of might tie together and I might realize that as I'm asking this, but do you think the problem is more the play calling of the offense? Like, what do you think is a bigger issue that needs to be addressed? The play calling of the offense, or do you think the actual management of the team? Because there's like two separate issues going on right now with the Rams. You've got them in games. The play calling is absurd people aren't playing well because of it. But then you also have like, oh, and we're releasing Daryl Henderson and Justin Hollins. And I, I feel like as I'm saying this, it goes together. But what do you think the biggest problem is? Because I feel like there's like all these like little things that we're seeing throughout the season. And I, you know, we scroll through Twitter during the games and I scroll through Rams Twitter, not during games. And I see all these multiple things that people are mentioning that are like, it's like all these like little nagging things that it's like you're picking an open wound. And now it's just like a big gaping hole and you lose to the Ugh. New Orleans Saints. It's like, what is it? Like, what, what? what needs to be fixed first? Because in my mind, I'm like, we can't go out there and we can't just magically get a new offensive line. 
We can't just magically cure Matthew Stafford's concussion. Concussion, like you have to work through these things. But I feel like Sean McVay is making it harder on everybody else to get through well, these things. That's the thing. I think teams around the league deal with the same. I'll be honest with you. I also cover the Jets. I watched every Jets game. They're having the same issues with offensive line. First off, they lose, you know, Mackay Becton for the year before the season even starts. They have to go and sign Dwayne Brown, who then immediately goes on IR. They've had issues to Max Mitchell, a fourth round pick who shouldn't even be starting, but had to start because of the injuries. They lost Elijah Vera Tucker for the year. You know, they, they lose George Fant, who only gave up one sack all season last year. You know, they lose all these guys. And it's like, they're just figuring out. Cedric Abui was starting yesterday. Or, or, you know, on Sunday, Cedric Abui is starting for them. Um, look, the Jets are just figuring it out. I mean, they're six and four. There are other teams that go through these injuries. The Rams aren't the most injured team. I thought they were. They're not. They're not. Exactly. When I looked, 49ers have yep. been dealing with issues. The Chargers are as banged up as anybody. And teams are finding a way to win. The Rams just aren't. And I think the Rams as great as McVay is in certain areas also struggles in other areas. And this is one thing he struggles with. That's why last year, Lexus, that Super Bowl win was such a big deal because that was the first time in Sean McVay's career where they really felt it. They lost all the games in November and people were counting them out. And I stood by them. I said, look, this team's going to win the Super Bowl. It's okay. And they did, but they had to do things. You know, they had to get OBJ involved uh, more in the offense. They had Von Miller, et cetera, whatever. This is different though. This is beyond that. This isn't a three game losing streak. This is like, you're probably not making the playoffs bad. And to get out of the hole, it's going to take next year. And it's going to take a lot of work to do this. And they're going to have to spend money. See, and that's, that's what I'm getting at because he, here's the thing, right? So we talk about, oh, well, the way to fix this is next year. I don't have faith that they're going to have a good draft. I don't have faith that they're going to make the best decisions in the off season because right now it seems like every move they're making is just like mind blowing. And that's going to really annoy the, <sighs> oh, trust and steam people. And yeah. I don't care because it, it, it's just like, it, it just feels like, and like I've said before, like you can only F them picks for so long. It's not a sustainable long-term uh, way to succeed in the NFL because the picks it's will definitely run out, not when right? you you're cutting guys like Terrell how, Burgess. I mean, you know. Well, and that's the thing. That's the thing. It's like so you want to say f them picks, but then you actually get picks, and then you're cutting them, and you're not developing them, or you're making the picks, and then these picks just end up not working out, <laughs> Bobby Evans. So it's like it's just like a very weird thing, and you see these teams in the NFL, like you guys, you see these dynasties. They were not. You don't build a dynasty that I thought they way. could have because they were Super really that way. they were hitting on their later you, picks. They, here's what, they they could have, but they that's what I'm saying. Botched it. I think they handle adversity yeah, worse than so, other teams. Right, and they also have a play call that has never that gone away. I just haven't seen anything. Like. They've always had yeah, a play calling well, issue. I mean, even when they okay. were great, remember how many times? I mean, we didn't even know each other at the time, but I was tweeting. I found myself tweeting it all the time. Like, why are we not running the ball with Ty Gurley? Todd Gurley is averaging 5.8 yards per carry in this game. Why are we not running the ball with him? And that was Todd Gurley. So this is my thing. It's like when people are like, Oh, Jake, dude, the, the Rams should get Tony Pollard. Why? So Pollard can sit on the bench the whole game and run the ball 10 times. I don't think so. No, like, that's the issue. And I think it all, it does start with managing the run. It's Sean McVay's biggest Achilles heel. Hell, I would call it his kryptonite. Sean McVay has kryptonite and it is the run game. He cannot manage it. He, it, I mean, I, I, again, I love the guy, but it, it, there's a pattern here. Todd Gurley. Okay. Disgruntled Todd Gurley, Cam Akers, regardless of how we feel about Cam doing it. Cam Akers is now in the media talking about it. And now Henderson on his way out is celebrating on Twitter. I mean, that should tell you all you need to know. There's a common variable there, and it's Sean I McVay. And I'm not saying fire him, but he needs to figure this out because they they can't do this to Kyron Williams. You'll have a nervous breakdown, but they can't do it for the, like the actual. <laughs> they can't do it for like the actual health of the team, though. They can't go through another one of those things. Guys, do you guys see me right now? Do I look well? Do I look well to you? Could you uh, like the idea of them? destroying Kyron Williams career actually would send me off 
into the into the abyss. Uh, into she the, gone. The deep end. Thing is, I just, I like, I am barely hanging on right now. Part of it is the Rams. Part of it is just because of my life choices. But I am barely hanging on to sanity. And I cannot like Kyron Williams guys looked so good on Sunday that just the idea of him behind this offensive line for the rest of the season and being mismanaged just breaks my heart. And I want the Rams to figure it out because this, you know, you, we can't keep seeing this uh, with the run game. And you know what makes it even worse is watching the 49ers run game. I watched that game last night on Monday night football. I watched, you know, Kyle Shanahan and how he uses the run and, it's sickening. It makes me sick. I, I just am absolutely, I want the Rams to figure it out. And guys, again, I know this episode is is just Jake and I venting, um, but that's, I think, what the Rams fan base is doing collectively right now. I mean, it's just, we're just in a, listen, it could be worse. We've seen worse if you've been a Rams fan, you know, for a while, like we have seen worse, but it, it's just frustrating because they have the talent. Now we do have some injuries. So like now, now Jake, I understand there's this question mark with Stafford. Um, so let's end the show talking about Stafford because um, he has a concussion. Well, he was out with a concussion. He came back to play uh, against the saints. Then he got hit again. And now is in concussion protocol again, Jake, a lot of people are thinking that he's going to retire. And I have mixed feelings about that. I'm not saying that he won't retire. I don't know that like, to my knowledge, Stafford doesn't have an extensive history of concussions. But that, that's what scares me because now so, he's opened Pandora's box. Right. And that's the thing is like, you know, people handle that all differently. So is Stafford's reaction going to be one or now possibly two is enough for me? Like that, that's scary. I'm out. Is he going to continue to play? And Jake, I really think it is going to depend on what the outlook of this Rams team looks like. Because if, if this, if there is not an appeal to Matthew Stafford, that this team is going to get it together and build a better roster for next season, he's not coming back at, at that point. I could see him being like, you know what? I'm not going to risk it to come back to a team that is not even going to make the playoffs or is not a contender. I'm out. I think that's what, that's what would happen. Cause he, you know, he won a ring. I think he, he proved what he needed to do full circle moment. Now, if the Rams get it together and they improve the roster and the health, you know, prognosis outlook for him is not like dire, obviously it's a different story, but if, if they're like, you're fine, you know, you recovered then yeah, I think he would come back. But I, I really think it's going to be a combination of those two things. I think it certainly is not going to help his chances of coming back. If the Rams roster continues to just spiral. Yeah, down And I think Kelly is. Stafford's going to have a huge play in this. Um, because people actually forget uh Kurt Warner's wife, Brenda Warner, had a huge uh you know impact there with Kurt Warner, and she was definitely vocal uh to the Rams organization. So it wouldn't be the first time. Um, and it's weird because Stafford kind of reminds me a little bit about Warner, just like the way he plays, like the sidearm throws that he has. I don't know. There's some things that I see about him. Um, also they <laughs> the only two that won the Super Bowl uh for the Rams. But, um, no, I love Stafford. I got to preface it with that because what I'm about to say is upsetting to people, but I mean, could be the reality. I love Stafford. Okay. I've been a defender of his back when he was in Detroit. I've watched him for years and uh, there are tweets out there that suggest that I wanted him five years ago. Okay. I wanted him instead of drafting Jared Goff, I wanted to see if we could trade that first rounder and get Matthew Stafford. Um, but anyway, Matthew Stafford has dealt with all sorts of injuries. He's already succumbed to the idea when he gets older and he's retired, he's going to be sore the rest of his life. That's what he, he signed up for that. Okay. He didn't sign up for the brain injuries and you know, Kelly, she had a a brain tumor. There's already, you know, there's already vibes there. Uh, you know, Kelly talking on her podcast, people dismiss that, but that's real. You know, that that's a real thing, because I think Kelly Stafford definitely has a big say in this. Um, I think she wants Matthew to do what is best for Matthew. But I also think she's not going to be somebody that, like, tells him he can't do something. But I think, you know, her input is definitely going to have an effect on Matthew Stafford, because without a doubt, if he doesn't get hurt, if he doesn't suffer these concussions, Stafford plays until he's 40. 
He loves playing football. He's a competitor. They have a good, a good roster right now. It seems bleak because all the injuries, but they have a good roster at the very least. And they're going to have a chance to replace these guys that are, you know, more of the weaker links, I would say of this roster, but hear me out when I say this, like you have to prioritize the person over the player and you know, CTE is real. Um, I think that there's a very real chance Stafford retires. Very real. And if that's the case, I know some people would be like, that means Sean McVay's gone. Not so fast. Because Sean McVay is not leaving after this season. That would kill his legacy. If he if he left as soon as the going got uh, went t- you know went tough, there's no way he would ever be able to hear the end of it. He's not leaving. Aaron Donald, Aaron Donald, if if Stafford walks out. Aaron Donald is going to be in that general manager's office. Like, Hey, I'm looking at retirement. I'm very much considering it. It depends on who we go out and get. And you look at the guys that would be available next year. Potentially Tom Brady is the biggest name. I personally think he'd be too old, 46 years old, but I feel like that's something the Rams would consider if Stafford did retire. I think Derek Carr is an option to trade for uh, kind of a similar player in that instance. You know, then there, there are guys like Ryan Tannehill, Carson Wentz. I actually would like to see Carson Wentz in this offense, like, you know, when the offense is actually humming. Um, but Alexis, I got to I got to say this, though. Um, I don't know. It, I, don't, I don't think it's it's a guarantee. But if Stafford uh, does retire. What if Lamar Jackson came to L.A.? Because. It's funny. I was I was talking um, with somebody about this. I'm not mentioning his name because I don't I don't know if he wanted to be associated with this, so I'm not saying anything. But um, I was talking to somebody about this, and it's uh, it's very interesting. He he does not believe Lamar Jackson would be, uh, you know, he he wouldn't be franchise tagged because of how that would look to the organization. Um, he believes that they would trade Lamar if they couldn't come to a deal, Baltimore, and. I think that that feels Hollywood enough for the Rams to do it. I just don't think like the Rams couldn't go out and get like Cooper Rush or like Andy Dalton and be like, Hey guys, Super Bowl, run it back. We're, we're, we're going for it. Like, no, like they would need to make a splash. And I'm not saying Lamar is even a possibility, but man, could you imagine that? I just right now is very, very simple. I want Stafford to do what's best for Stafford. If the medicals come out and, you know, he should retire, retire. Like, I don't want this guy not being able to to recognize his daughters in 10 years, you know. But at the same time, like, if he is healthy and he feels good and him and Kelly work it out and like, okay, you know, keep playing. We'll see how it goes. Then the Rams really owe it to Stafford to put that offensive line around him. Um, I know they spent a lot of money and I don't like the the yeah, narrative that they didn't care about him and they put a makeshift. They didn't put a makeshift offensive line together for him. They spent a lot of money on the offensive line. They extended Havenstein. They went out and they, you know, re-signed Brian Allen, Coleman Shellen, you know, no boom. They had David Edwards. They believed in those guys. Okay. You can't see, you can't foresee all these injuries. They drafted Logan Bruss and the poor guy couldn't even make it through the preseason. Next year will be different. Um, there's pressure, though. They couldn't just necessarily bring all those guys back and be like, this is our starting offensive line. I would imagine that they would consider making a big move, maybe going out and getting a Laramie Tunsil or something, somebody like that. Um, because if Stafford does come back, then they owe it to him to protect him. And, you know, he he's saying, all right, I'm coming back. But, like, you know, this is a risk, you know? And so... I think there, there's multiple things here. This is shaping up Alexis to be 2016 on crack. That that off that off season, you know, Peyton Manning in the uh, remember. I think he just won the Super Bowl, right? Peyton Manning was in the um, uh, yeah, they just won the Super Bowl. Peyton Manning went on a late night show in L.A. and he said, "How about the Rams?" And he's like, "Well, you know, Marshall's a Rams fan." So there's a lot of speculation, right? And then like, you know, paint and all that, that kind of gives me the Brady vibes, you know? Um, I don't think they'll go that route, but I could definitely see them going that route. But it feels like 2016 again. Do you see what I'm saying? Before they got golf, it feels like that transformative period where they're going to have to make a big, big, big move. 
And if Stafford does retire, this team is going to have to hurry up and do something or AD is out. And then once AD is out, now you have to change your defense because what they do, they do because they have Aaron Donald. They would have to completely change up their defense if they didn't have AD. And I just think that, you know, uh, there's no way we could have predicted a season like this, but I think the Rams could have handled this better. I know they've, they were dealt a bad deck, but they, they could have handled this better. They, they could have been less reactionary. Um, and I, there's no excuse why they're not six and four right now, or at least, you know, five and five. I mean, they should very much be in the thick of it at the very least. And they should not be three and seven uh, on the verge of getting, you know, 40 burgered by the uh, chiefs. Yeah. I, 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 we don't even need to preview that guys. Um, Please start, just start Bryce uh, Perkins. Give us something. We're not even going to preview. I just think that game is going to be fun to just kind of, you know, that's an experiment game, you know, just really try some new things, go for it. Uh, I'm not looking forward to that. Uh, We are going to wrap this up here, but guys, long story short, um, you know, um, it it is trying times and every fan base and every team in history has had to go through it at one point or another. Um, I'm very much optimistic. This will be short lived. I sadly do think, for the rest of the season, this is going to kind of be where we're at just based on the way things are going. It is really hard to rally from three and seven, um, especially when you've got other teams in the NFC that are, have really good records. It's just, it's, it's just mathematically, it is not a good look. Um, so that's where we're at. Um, we are not, like I said, um, this, this, there's no other preview episode for the chiefs game. We know it's Thanksgiving week. I'm traveling. Um, so I won't be able to record anyways. We will have oh, a Chiefs God. recap episode. <laughs> next- <laughs> uh, oh so my God. They 16 point uh, underdogs. That might feature me. <laughs> I don't know, but I might be drinking vodka recap episode. Oh. Um, so be just be on the lookout for that. Uh, that will be our welcome back after the holidays. Uh, but in all seriousness, I hope everybody has a really safe Thanksgiving, really fun Thanksgiving, whatever you're doing. I hope you spend it with loved ones. Have a great time. There will be football on and won't be the Rams, but maybe that's for the best at this point. Um, football on. <laughs> um, all day mm-hmm. on Thursday. Um, so yeah, I hope everybody has, has a really good uh, holiday weekend. Guys, as always, if you like what you hear, please like and subscribe. You can follow us on social media at Downtown Rams. You can follow me on Twitter at the Alexis Craft, and you can follow Jake at JK Bogan. We'll be back next week. But until then, guys, stay safe, take care, and go Rams. If you haven't joined Prize Picks yet, you need to do it this season. Prize Picks allows you to pick up to five player props, and it gives you the option to 10x your winnings. Look at this right now. Tom Brady right now, for a limited time only, is a free square. Because unless he gets hurt, he is going to be getting that .5. I'm going to select Tom Brady. I'm going to select Josh Allen going 275.5. Matthew Stafford going 265.5. We'll just throw Lamar Jackson in here. And we'll just throw, let's just throw Justin Fields gets more than 191.5. So, what you do here, you go, you put more, you put more, or less, if you believe... You know, Lamar Jackson gets less than that. And there you go. 10x your winnings if if this pays out. You will actually get paid out even if you only hit three of them. You'll get 0.4 times your money back. You'll get two times. You'll double your money if you get at least four out of five. Deposit today by using our promo code DTRAMS, and you'll get up to a $100 bonus match.